One of the many blessings that I've been able to experience as a priest so far are the times when people come up to me and they trust me with situations and ask me to pray for them. Now, this is a beautiful act of faith that I know is not just limited to priests. I'm sure some of you may have close friends or family members who ask you to pray for them all the time as well. And what they're saying in that moment is that there is something or some situation that they are going through and they need God's help. They can't do it alone. And many people praying for a specific intention is one of the many ways that we as the body of Christ, the church, manifests our faith. And the power of intercessory prayer is something that cannot be understated. Well, we see the power of intercessory prayer all the way back in our first reading today from Genesis during the time of Abraham. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were cities filled with evil people committing evil acts, and God heard the cry of his people against them. So he was determined to make everything just and right and to destroy the cities if it was true. Abraham, upon hearing God's plan, was worried because he was concerned about the potential innocent people that would be destroyed along with the evil people. And so he begged and he pleaded with God over and over, asking if he found any innocent people in the city, would he spare the whole city for the sake of the innocent? And God agreed. And as the story goes on after this reading from where we read today, God did rescue the innocent and then destroy the wicked city. And if we examine our own lives, we're probably not as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah. That's true. But if we are honest with ourselves, we are all guilty of sin from time to time. And our fallen human nature is prone to sin due to concupiscence. All humanity due to sin has deserved the eternal punishment that comes along with that. But our Lord came down and became man to set us free from this fate. He was the one just man that interceded on our behalf for God to save then all of us. He took the punishment on himself that rightly belonged to us. He gave us a way to be free from our sins when we inevitably now fall again. Created the way through confession for us to pick ourselves back up again. He taught us how to love God more than our sinfulness and then taught us how to pray to him, to start that relationship with the Lord. Because in the gospel, our Lord gives us the prayer, the Our Father, the perfect model for all prayer. And then right after the Our Father, it's not a mistake then that he gives a parable on the importance of persistence in prayer. Many people often get discouraged when they pray because they ask God for something and then they don't seem to receive it. And I honestly wish it was that simple sometimes, like a prayer hotline where all you have to do is call up to God, ask him for it to stop raining, and before you finish the sign of the cross, the rain stops. That would be nice, but that's not how it works. But God will always give us what we need, but not usually in the way that we think we need it, or maybe not even the way that we expect it. Our prayer builds a relationship with God, and that relationship is truly life-giving. It helps us conform our will more to what God is going to have happen. We're not praying for God to change his mind. We're praying for God to change our mind to know what is truly right that's going to happen. We have to be persistent in our prayer. You wouldn't expect one phone call a month with a person would sustain a friendship. And so neither would that infrequent prayer sustain a life-giving relationship with God. Our Lord teaches us another way to then stay close to him through the Our Father, which is the line that's at the very center of the Our Father, which gives it special importance. If it's in the center of a structure, there's a reason why. And that line is, give us this day 
our daily bread. Our frequent reception of the Eucharist expresses our faith in him and keeps us united to him. And so as we come to this altar today to partake in the Eucharist, we trust that he will strengthen us and help us weather whatever storm we are going through. All we have to do is remain persistent.